How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. Now, on our DIY electrical projects, when we're taking non-metallic cabling or Romex and we're bringing that into metal junction boxes like this 4x4, but also your main panel, your sub panel, or even boxes up in your ceiling, which might be for your light fixtures or your fans, there are a few things you need to know, and there's definitely ways to do it wrong, and there's just a ton of options out there. On this one box, I'm showing eight different options that you can get. So how do you know which one's the right one to use? Cost, quality, meets code, and just easy to use. Well, let's run around this, showing you the pros and cons of each one. I'll show you my favorite and the one I use on all my projects, but also give you the feedback from the audience so you can take all that information and make the best decision for your own project. So let's jump into it. So kicking things off, it's good to know that you'll commonly have half inch knockouts, and then this one is a half inch, but you could also expand that out to three quarters of an inch. Usually the way you would do this is you'll just take your pliers, you could take a flathead screwdriver, your larger clients, and you just hit right on the opposite side of this little metal tab that's holding that knockout in place. So you go ahead and tap right here, and then that will knock that in. Then you can go to the inside and just grab a hold of that. Usually you bend it down, twist one direction, twist the other, and then you're out. So let's run through the eight different options, starting off with number one, and hopefully this is the one that you don't use. Unfortunately, this is the one I find quite often, and that is just passing your Romex through. This is 12-2 Romex, so we have two conductors and one bare ground. We just pass it through, cut back sheathing, and then start to wire that into the circuit. Now, this is the whole purpose why we need connectors, right? Is because we have sharp metal edges on these knockouts, which can cut through your sheathing, cut through the insulation on your hot conductor, and then short to your hot conductor. If your box is grounded, that would trip your breaker. If it is an old house and it is ungrounded, that means this metal box now turns into your hot conductor, and if anybody touches that, they could get shocked because the flow of electricity wants to return to its source, and you might be that return to source. So please don't do this. Unfortunately, it is very common. Next up is almost as simple, but we do solve one of those problems, and that is a simple plastic bushing. This is a half inch bushing. We could pass that through. Now we are protected, right? So we're not gonna be exposed to the sharp metal to cut through our sheathing and our conductors, but we have no strain relief. Nothing is gonna hold this wire into your box, so you're not gonna be able to maintain code, which would be cutting back the sheathing to here, and then at least six inches of conductors coming out with a minimum of three inches from the surface of the box. So that would be code, but that's not gonna be maintained with this bushing because there's no strain relief. Now number three kind of steps it up, right? Now we have some strain relief. This is a plastic NM cable connector, and it's three eighths. Don't be confused. This is for half inch knockouts, but the trade size is 3H. So that can be a little confusing when you're just getting started with using these type of connectors, but just know half inch knockout, but the trade side is 3H. Now in this case, we inserted that from the outside of the box, and then our non-metallic could pass through into the box. Now we are both protecting that, non-metallic, and also now I can't pull it out. I have strain relief. So this would work for most situations and I believe is accepted in all different municipalities and states, but you guys can correct me if I'm wrong if you know differently in your own area. So that's number three. Now I'll pass this through. The challenge comes, what if I had drywall coming out to there, right? I would not have access to put this cable connector from the outside. So I might be passing Romex through a wall trying to hit this knockout because I can't get access to it from the drywall. Well, you're in luck because there is an exact cable connector for that. Now this looks very similar, right? To our option number three, it's just those tabs are in the opposite direction for strain relief. Why is that and when is it handy? Well, it can be super handy if you're fishing fish wire through that knockout and we had drywall here and you're pulling your Romex through, that means you can pull your Romex into your box, most likely more like into your main panel or sub panel. And then you could take this guy and you could actually feed that through 
down through your row mech. It'll give you a little bit of resistance, but with a little effort, you can push it through. And then you just work that connector to where you want it on the row mechs. And then from the inside, you could go ahead and secure that connector. Right, so that's the main difference. You're not gonna be able to do that with option number three because it would have to go from this side and the tabs are in the opposite direction. So that's when this one would come in super handy for your projects around the house. Now number five is kind of cool and this is the last plastic one. You'd have to insert it from the outside so you'd have to have the access there. You would then take off this small little gate here and then that's when we would pass through our Romex You'd get it to where you want it in terms of length, and then you would insert that gate and then press that down. If you need to, you can use your strippers, your hybrid strippers or your clines. And then now here is our strain relief, right? So we're protected. There is our strain relief. I've never used this one. Let me know in the comments which ones you guys like best. Plastic are easy to use, but the biggest feedback is sometimes, like we saw in the Insider, it can really fight you trying to get that Romex in. And honestly, people then will just go ahead and break off these tabs, and then that basically just turns it into a plastic bushing, which is not what you want. Cost-wise, completely depends on your quantities. You're looking at 15 to 20 cents for your bushing, and your standard one, and then more like 40 to 50 cents for these two plastic. But let's move on to our three metal options and then also get the feedback from the audience and what they prefer to use when running Romex into metal boxes. Now, first up on metal, I used to see these in older houses in my area is a two-piece connector. So what you do is you're able to pass that through the knockout, but then you kind of got to expand it out to hold it in place and then you would pass your Romex inside. So that would both give us the protection we're looking for and then also the strain relief because we're able to go ahead and clamp the two pieces down on a Romex. Now, depending if you're only passing one cable of Romex, and especially if it's 14 gauge in, just know it will move around in the knockout and it might actually fall out depending on these tabs. You can kind of have to fight it a little bit. I don't mind this one. And just know, instead of a Phillips head, use a Robertson square drive. Klein has a lot of these nice multi-piece screwdrivers that will basically come with everything you need. So next up, we have number seven and number eight. From the one side, pretty much just look the same, but in terms of how they hold into the knockout, they are quite a bit different. Number seven here, is a 3 8 inch metal cable clamp, and then that will just push into that knockout. And then that second option with the nut, you go ahead and tighten this on. And then to tighten it, it just depends. If I have access, I usually snug it up myself and then just use my hybrid wire strippers to then rotate that in place, tightening it up, and then also getting the screws positioned where I need them. And then no, there are a few different wrenches that you can actually get that are purpose built for these nuts and they hook onto it and then that's how you tighten it up. These can be handy. There's ones that are just simple straight like this and then others that are offset. Now, both of these are gonna be the same in terms of how they're gonna hold the Romex. You're gonna pass that through, you can pass one, you could pass one set, you could pass multiple sets, and again, your Robertson's going to be your go-to for tightening that up. It's going to give you the torque that you want, and then it also is going to stay on the actual screw so it's not popping out, where a slotted or flathead would give you a lot of capability to torque it down, but it's going to keep popping out. Now, earlier today, I did put a poll out on our channel. I only included four options, and going by our numbers here, it was the number two plastic bushing, number three, that standard plastic connector, and then seven and eight. Those were the options on what is your favorite, what do you guys use? And seven out of 10 people, with about 2,000 people reporting back, said that number eight. So that's gonna be your metal connector with the lock nut. That is also my favorite. That's my default. I'd say nine out of 10 times, that's what I use. I do carry a few of the number of the number three, just that standard plastic for certain instances. And actually I'm gonna include, and I'm actually gonna include a few of those insiders too, because there are some scenarios where that would come in handy. Now one question might be, hey, if I don't have access and I wanna use those metal ones, how the heck 
do I get that through, right? How do I get access if I have the drywall right here? There is actually a method to do that. I've done it in a couple videos and you can check out this video right here and the way that I get the new Romex into the metal box is a little bit of a hack that I learned from Joel Walsman from Electric Pro Academy and might help you out on your own projects. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.